But you can't describe what a racist means to you. Uh, somebody that, someone that discriminates on those grounds, that's not us. I've given you the definition of racist. Well, yeah. You told me what you thought about the fact that British workers uh, should uh, have a superior chance of getting a job above European workers, whether they're from Eastern Europe or whatever. And that is quite simply a racist comment. No, it isn't. It is the job of a British government, firstly, to defend the realm, and secondly, to put the interests of the people that live in this country first. She is a member of our party and has been for some years, uh, and she works for us in our head office in London. Do you think you should have what made that... What is your problem with her? I have no problem with her at all. I just wondered whether you should have made that clearer right. on your manifesto. So, I can't really win with you, can I? On the one hand, you're saying that we are talking about a white working class in Britain and secondly when I tell you that working directly for me is a girl who's half Indian you've got a problem with that too. No I don't have a problem. No, 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 I don't mind I, being, I don't I being criticised but with do that make at your all. mind up what the criticism is. You try to turn everything into a joke. You have a campaign that says that Europeans are taking British jobs. Yes. You employ a German woman to work in your office. Well, she happens well, to be your wife. Well, she was she happens to spend many hundreds of thousands of British taxpayers' money. How do you justify it? No, she doesn't. She earns a very modest salary uh, for working extremely unsociable hours for me and being available up to seven days a week. It's a very difficult situation uh, to a mass of hundreds of thousands of people coming in and flooding the lower ends of the labour market. So that's it. It's clear. You could, do not believe that any British person is capable of being the secretary of their league. That's nonsense. You know, Why would you it. repeat those sort of inflammatory comments because when more right. than 30 people have been killed? Because they're right. The danger for you, I guess, is twofold. One is that it might bring, it might draw the suggestion that it's out there, might draw the wrong kind of people well, to UKIP. Well, and the real danger, the real danger is that today's our national conference, you're the BBC, your job is to be a public service broadcaster and to ask us what our policies are, what our aims are and what the electoral difficulties are, but you don't appear to be very interested. Are you happy to pick a candidate who says a immigrants. I just want to send the lot back. She doesn't say that and it's a complete misquote. It's on tape for her husband Yes, and I've the seen tape. the tape and it's a complete misquote and she says How it. Can you misquote she says tape? it in the context of illegal immigrants and she says that's what I'd well, like to say but now I can't say it. Well, I've seen the full quotes around it and that's not the context of illegal. It's not illegal. She talks about the lot, all immigrants. No, she doesn't. Is it your view that a British government should stop the takeover of AstraZeneca. It can't. No, but you could change the no, law. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It can't. Who would you rather have as Prime Minister? David Cameron or Ed Miliband? Well, we, we, we've, we've got Jean-Claude Juncker at the moment. Our national just debt... Just give me an example. No, 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 I'm not going to. I'll tell you why. Our national debt has doubled in the last five years. 624,000 migrants settled in Britain last year. All you and anybody right. else wants to talk about is some tiddly piece well, it's, it's, of it's, our manifesto. No, I'm sorry, manifesto. I'm sorry, some tiddly piece of our manifesto. Tomorrow, you're going to be speaking, and that's when they really slashed the ticket prices to 20 and 10 quid for children. They Does that suggest that you're maybe a little bit toxic? We've slashed it from 25 quid to 20 quid. What, what is your point? It seems to me that there is a kind of Farage position, <coughs> a Carswell position, a Nuttall position. And they're different. They're not a cohesive position. Well, the alternative for a party. would be Stalinism, wouldn't it? Private Eye has reported that some of your medical bills are paid by one of the owners. Hang on, hang on. I'm not having this. Why not? Hang on. I'm not having libel thrown at me on, you know, live on the radio. But people aren't worried that We're the Labour Party or the Conservative Party is spreading racist propaganda. Well, why people have the don't... Conservative Party got a former BNP activist I... standing for them in Lincolnshire? Will you ask the Conservative? Of course I will. Absolutely. No, you, but you won't. You see, because well, now you're calling me a liar. And what about the line about we're not wanting to live next door to Romanians? It's perfectly acceptable for people not to. I was asked if a group of Romanian men moved in next door to you, would you be concerned? What about if a group of German children did? What's the difference? Oh, the difference, and you know what the difference is. No, I honestly don't. The question was, uh, do you have a, would you be concerned if a German family moved in, or a group of Romanian men? If a group of any men moved in next door to you, you'd be concerned. But what would... <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you? So if ten blokes move in next door, that's perfectly normal, would you? Yeah, yeah. Sure. 29 million Romanian Bulgarians will be, will be coming in when... I didn't say will be coming, it could come. No, Nigel, that's what you could said. Could come. No, 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 but that was on your poster. Talk about could, myths, it was no, a myth. No, 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 let, Nigel, I'm Nigel, sorry. Nigel, 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 I'm sorry. that was a myth. Let's get this right. So what are the benefits of the EU? We've all said the wrong things. What are the benefits? Tell us live, what are the benefits? Well, if you're... If, if you're what are the benefits? No, 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 for people if, here as well, what are the benefits? There aren't any. We're going to get to a point in I'm this country I, I where your kids you know. are facing racism. No, 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 no. No, we're facing racism, facing discrimination because they are born... We've got to get some action. This is what your party's leading people. 
first one. We need to get some accuracy here. Now, you've obviously been wound up and put into battle here um, under, you know, quite a few uh, quite serious uh, misapprehensions. I've never worked on Wall Street, OK? Never been a stockbroker. I'm sorry to disappoint you, all right? Your party wants to increase spending for private schools and take it away from state schools. I don't know. Do you know. Who wound you up at the back and said you in here? I do not know, but that is simply and totally I'll tell you who wound me up. Um, listen, you went to a private school. You worked as a stockbroker. No, I didn't, but go on. What, what did you do then? I worked in the metals business, buying and selling lead and zinc and things like that, but go on. Is there a, you know, Holocaust <coughs> deniers that you apparently signed deals with and all no, these things? No, no, that's not true, Can but you, go on. Don't you want to abolish the inheritance tax, which is which only applies yes. to 5% of the rich, the richest 5% in the UK, which means you, you're clearly in favour of people who have the money to go to university, who can inherit Have you that. seen London house prices? Inheritance tax is not paid by the rich. The, the, rich, have, the rich have never paid inheritance tax. The, the, the rich, of the, the rich excuse, me, excuse me, the rich can avoid inheritance tax with long-term tax planning. Do you not think that the introduction of a none of the above option would damage the UKIP vote? Because the UKIP vote um, is, to some extent at least, a protest vote. No. And none of the no, above that is, is that a protest is, vote. That is completely wrong. And the suggestions that in exchange for putting him forward for a peerage, um, you, you would do that if those papers support UKIP in a run-up to the election. I never, I never discuss any meetings I have with anybody, which is why when Douglas Carswell and then Mark Reckless defected to UKIP, they came as bolts, of the, bolts from the blue and total surprises. I never discuss private meetings. So, so you won't confirm or deny I never, do, I, never, I never discuss private meetings. But are you confident you'll have support from certain newspapers? I never discuss private <laughs> meetings. Look at some of your other candidates. Uh, Alex Wood, for example, who apparently made a Nazi salute. Uh, Councillor Rob Fraser, who reportedly used a well-known racist phrase. Anna-Marie Crampton, who you saw in... So when uh, uh, Nick Clegg comes there. on here, wait, do wait you a minute. say that Nick Clegg uh, they, they will... Wait a, um, what wait about a your wait council? Wait a let me finish this question. <laughs> they were all suspended from the party. Yeah. Are any of those back in the party? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't run party decisions. You should know, though, shouldn't uh, you? No, I, I, I lead the party. I don't micromanage every aspect of it. But I wonder when Nick Clegg comes on, do you say, well, what about your councillor, Nick, who in April we was, do sent, indeed. was we sent do to indeed. prison for planting bombs? The Tories are arguing that line, or will be no, arguing not. that line in Brussels. No, they're not. And no, Labour's got Even if we leave the EU, it will not deliver in its entirety, in any way, a, a, a prevention of migrants coming into this country if we wish to engage in international trade and commerce and be part of a free trade area. Well, Nigel, what's your response to that? I'm sorry, but that, I'm sorry, that is complete and utter rubbish. Nowhere else in the world does the fact you buy and sell goods from each other free of tariffs means you have the absolute free movement of people. Absolutely nowhere else in the world, or indeed in the history of free trade deals. Given that 50% of our exports go to no, it's not EU 50%. countries, it is to, to EU 40%. countries. No, that's to Euro area countries. 50% to the EU, and you want to come out of the EU. The and two, you don't. By two, I don't want to come out of the EU because I want to trade with people in the EU. Switzerland is and not a member of the EU. Norway is not a member of yes. the EU. They have exactly the same and terms of trade that we do. I believe if we joined the Euro 10 years ago, actually things might have turned out differently, yes. Didn't because I think we would have had a very... Okay. Where Nigel Farage and his United Kingdom Independence Party are deeply unpatriotic oh, is that please. our soldiers fought and died please. in two world wars for, for peace Let's and democracy, democracy in Europe. For f peace and democracy mm. in Europe. And what the European the European Union has done has consolidated peace and democracy on our continent and it continues to do it certainly democracy. has. The very fact that you as an advocate of us becoming part of a single state did not even know what that stood for says to me oh, oh, oh. we're not That's ready yet and it may be not for a thousand yeah. years. Okay. The idea they want to return to lots of nation states with capital controls of their own currencies and their own national economic policies well, well we, they, Nigel I, believes I, in that yes, I don't. Let me just sorry, let Nigel. Dennis, you know you're you're stuck with a big idea you believe in it for decades, you cannot recognise that it's gone wrong. It is laughable no, that because a person has yeah, a wound, they, they can't do, they are can't they do a job. they worth less to their well, companies? We have to make a decision here, don't we? You know, women are paid 30% less than men in the city. Why is that? And I'm suggesting it's because they make different lifestyle choices. You're saying women who have families are discriminated against. Women who decide to have children women, are discriminated against. No, they're, 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 they're not discriminated against. They, in, in, well, in, in a I've, bottom line business, they make it harder for themselves. It's simply a statement of fact. Well, except I have an alternative view of the reason why women are paid 30% less in the city is because you play deliberately to all the sexist bosses oh, out no. there and allow and cause this that, very no, problem. I'm, I'm sorry, you have I'm made sorry. the that, situation that worse. Absolute For all rubbish, the working mothers, not just That's in the city, you have made the situation worse. Can I put you, are women working? If it takes 
pulling out of the European Convention to sort out our human rights laws, then you know, that that's should be on should the do. table. But that's fine, but we can't do that and stay a member of the European Union. The two are completely linked, you know that, and yet we never have that conversation. Are you saying we can leave that and stay part of the European Union? What I'm saying, Nigel, is that we need to take a sensible approach in looking at how we sort out our relationship with yeah. the European Court and with the European well, Convention. Well, they've become and one of the same thing. You also say you want to keep the flame of Thatcherism alive. I don't think that's going to serve working I, people in well, this country. Again, you see, that was what a headline was written in a newspaper. I never said that. So you don't, you don't think that somehow you're the heir to Mrs Thatcher on policy, on I whether think, it's uh, charging think, for the NHS or all the these one, other things? The one thing that happened during the 1980s that needs to happen again is the size of the state was reduced. I think there is a very urgent need, see, given, given how indebted yeah. the Labour Party left this country see, and the fact the coalition have added hugely to the national debt, we've got to reduce the size see, of the state. I think state. people can't actually deliver the welfare reform, the immigration reform, or indeed the referendum in Europe. The only thing you can do is make it slightly easier for Labour and Ed Miliband to well, walk into Downing Street and do exactly the opposite well, if you don't to those under, things if that, you don't that you're saying arithmetic. people should be able to come. You know, I mean, look, the numbers suggest that is simply not true. All right. UKIP can't uh, deliver those things. Hard-working no. families. Well, that's rather like immigration controls. You can't deliver those, okay. can you? So. The biggest lie that needs to be quashed is that there was somehow a referendum promised in a previous manifesto. That is not the case. <laughs> no, no, OK. Well, well, show, show me the page, ago. Nigel. Well, hold on, hold on a minute. We're talking about the God manifesto knows. upon which this uh, Conservative-led government got elected, and there was no referendum in there. 2009, you can... European elections, no. you said vote for us and we will guarantee you a referendum if we get into Nigel, government. before you... I give you a no, 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 Nigel, Nigel, no, Nigel. I'm sorry. I think people want to pay for key NHS services, like going to see your GP, as Nigel would have you do that. I don't think so where, people want to give from, the top 1% where, where this, top this, this this a massive tax. I mean, that's your manifesto. I mean, no, you no, set no, yourselves no, up no, as no, somehow no, the, 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 the voice of working people. You would do I mean, so many things this. which would do unbelievable damage to my community. Help us with a manifesto. That's very good. I thought you were just going to say... The weasel lies you have heard from these three parties on this panel and you listen to them and you listen and they say, oh, the law needs to be changed. Yeah, it's all Europe. It, Enterprise Act is this British right, decision. Let, let Nigel Farage finish his sentence. You, 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 you are either, you are either willfully lying to these people or you're, to pigging, or you're pigging them. Oh, oh, oh. When people like Nigel say things like, when I'm on a bus or a train, I feel uncomfortable. But was it awkward if I hear people speaking another language other than English? I think that's kind of ugly. So let's have a calm and do rational debate. I do, actually. Do you? Do you think, I do. So, speak, I do. So do you not think that people coming to this country in reasonable controlled numbers, learning English and integrating and becoming part of us is not important. I think it's very, very important you, indeed. He's the no. man who said that he feels uncomfortable hearing foreign accents on the train. He's a master. Master, Steve, he's a master at pressing the button <laughs> of, of, of fear. You better watch if you want. Uh, and, and, Steve, and, Steve, and Steve, uh, so do you support uncontrolled immigration? Are you happy if large sections of our towns and cities are non-English speaking? So you, you feel totally comfortable with that, do you? Yeah, well, you're interested. I mean, I mean, if you do, you better watch if you want. Well, well, I'd be happy with that. That's I, fine. I, oh, I, I don't feel uncomfortable on you don't. commuter lines, as you described, hearing foreign accents being spoken. So you're I think happy with uncontrolled immigration and an open door no. to half a billion people. They're bringing their skills, their talents, their work ethic and that's a boost for our economy what we need to address which is exactly why we've got gone down this road of the, the renegotiation is to reduce this artificial draw factor that's created by having a benefit system which draws extra people to the country because they can claim benefits from day one we want people to come and work is that a boost for British workers? Is getting rid of British workers and replacing them with foreign workers or driving down the wages of existing workers? It may be good for the big multinationals, it may be good for the type of people that fund the Conservative Party, but is it good for British workers and families? I don't, I don't think it is. This is not a political project. Of this course it is. This is not about well, it. I don't want a united uh, state of Europe. Everybody in I'll Europe that but, wants it wants a state way. of Europe. Oh. For Nigel to say, we need to be internationalists and think beyond Europe. Yes. The way you get into China and India and America is through Europe. No, it is not. It is a no. big no. trading no. block. No. And to, no. and to turn, no. No. To turn our back on that is the, is the we, little we, England we rhetoric which will bring us towards we poverty in the long run. So we, Europe is our way we, we into and through the world right. and we need a reform. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we cannot have this. Now, when this referendum comes... We can have it. When this referendum sure. comes, the entire political class will tell you that we're better off inside the EU because it gives us more clout on the world stage. Actually, nothing could be further from the truth. As a so-called career politician, I think Nigel fits that bill much better than I do. Oh, please. <laughs> um, how, 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 how,
on earth do you get to that? Well, I mean, you've been a member of the European Parliament, you've, you've changed parties, I mean, you, you can argue I spent about... 20 years in business. Did Ed Miliband spend 20 years in business? Well, he didn't spend six weeks in business, did he? Well, I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, really? Really? That's the sort of petty political point scoring that I think I, the no, questioner no, is asking no, about. No, no, that's fundamental. He is a pound shop Enoch Powell, and we've got to watch him. Yeah. Well, Russell, that's all, um, that's all well and good, and you've got your point of view. The question was, is Britain overcrowded? And, and, and uh, do you think I'm wrong? I mean, do, I mean, do you, do you yes. not think? Do Nigel, you, can okay. I not be do more you not clear, think? mate? I do think you're think? wrong. Do I you come not from think? the kind of... Well, commu this is called question time, this programme, right? And well, tonight happens, you could have another And what happens is, <laughs> members of the audience ask questions and we're expecting them to answer them. You haven't answered this lady's question. He's oh, a racist, scumbag, trying to blame immigrants <laughs> for the car packs because right. of his rich... Well, well, right. Right. Russell, you've got some voters here, mate. You ought to stand. I mean, they're, they're, right. these are your voters. They're, they're lovely people, aren't they? Let the Europeans get on with saving their single currency, with doing what they have to do. But this does not mean that Britain has to leave the European Union. But they can't save their single currency. It's a doomed project. The north and south of Europe cannot fit together and survive together inside the same economic and monetary union. Had it been Germany, and a few of the northern countries, it might have worked, but this is doomed. I've always been a politician, and the appointment as a commissioner as a political appointment and not a bureaucratic one. Thank you. Well, well we were elected, <laughs> were you? Oh, I'm discriminatory, sexist, racist. I was a banker. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm racist. Yes. Was I a banker? Well, no, you were a stockbroker. No, I wasn't. You were a stockbroker. No, you yeah, haven't even got your facts right, mate. You're selling metals. I see. You haven't even got your facts right. We've got Johnny Rockard with you today. Uh, what's, so what's he done wrong? What's he done wrong? Yes. He's a, he's a disgusting person that shouldn't be Why? shouldn't be fielding for a political Why seat. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, tell me. Because he's a disgusting kind of uh, um, a, a man with no moral. He's got no moral. Oh. Oh, you think it's all right? You are think you it's all right for a porn star? Are you a Cromwellian purism? Do you think it's? No, I'm not. Do you think it's all right for a porn star to stand for what? To, to stand for well, election? He's done nothing illegal. Nope. He, and we're we're a party. We're a party that believes live and let live. Be happy, everybody. We haven't even got to say, you can't shake your head yet. Bans us I don't agree from with making our own trade union. deals. That's not true. Our either. own trade deals. Well, we're in a political union. That's why it has a flag and an anthem. Do Hang you want us to be a member of the single market? No. You don't. No. So you want us to be, you don't even want Norway, status, Iceland, no. 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 So no. you want us no. to be a country no. completely yes, with alone yes. in all the world. Alone. Wouldn't that yes. be awful? Independence, the word. What do these guys offer? to the voters at home well, if we vote to leave. Well, thank you. What, well, what, well, what thank do you. people get? Well, what if, will they get if, on if we June stay in, 24th? If we stay in, will they leave? We stay, they leave? we stay in a club that is centralising at a rapid leave? pace. We stay in a club which Turkey's joining within five no, years no, no, no. if the German Chancellor uh, gets her way. If we leave, do you know the one thing I can absolutely guarantee you if we leave is that that building behind us and this nation will be self-governing. I think what's really Tell interesting... Tell us what out looks like. Well, he's the interviewer. I think what's really interesting is actually there are probably more divisions and enmities within the Remain campaign. Anyway, I, no, this, I I, this policy... Uh, 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 as soon as you invoke Article 50, all the trade deals and everything you have today stay in place. No, they right? don't. And they're so, suspended. So, they're suspended. You're, 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 no, you're they're not. Right. Right. No, no. If we're going to have this argument, you mustn't lie. No, so you rather like no, Vladimir Putin. No, I don't at all. I can't stand him. But, I thought but, you admired but, him. But, but I don't want to go you to war with him. You said you admired him. I don't you want to go. I said I wouldn't want to live in Russia. You said you But compared to the pygmies who wanted to take us to war in Syria, I thought he was a head and shoulders above the rest. We see our farmers who rely on subsidies from the European Union and access to the European market to uh, make a living. There would be no living for farmers in Wales uh, without that. Carwin's idea that without EU money, all farming in Wales would cease is ludicrous. I mean, farming wasn't invented here in 1975. <laughs> if a few hundred million pounds a year comes into Wales as part of Objective, uh, Objective One funding, Contrast that. Six billion. Contrast. Oh, please don't. Um, 2000 to 2006. <laughs> six billion. That. Check just the facts. Just, I mean, let's, let's keep it sane. You want to withdraw from the security cooperation that we have that enables us to arrest people who flee to other countries. Oh. And so you want to withdraw from that cooperation? Oh, How will you know there are criminal oh, records? I want to stop foreign terrorists coming into Britain in, in unlimited numbers. You're absolutely right. Yes, I do. Are you saying the CBI are wrong? The CBI is a very interesting case. 
They've been wrong about everything since the gold standard in 1929. <laughs> the only reason why we haven't got a trade agreement with, uh, between the EU and India is, is because Britain keeps blocking it. And they're blocking it because it would mean more migration from India. Alan, right, you, on, you, you, clearly, you clearly know next to nothing about how trade deals work. Nowhere else, anywhere in the world, do trade deals involve the free movement of people only inside the European well, Union. Nigel. Do you seriously think we can strike yes. a better trade no, deal with a superpower like yes. China Definitely. representing yes. 60 million yes. as opposed to 500 million? Yes. It makes Nick. no sense. Yes, no, Nick, we do. Hold that point. Nick, We're going to bring in Georgia. No, I'm sorry. We Why? are going to bring I'm in sorry. Georgia from the audience. I'm sorry. Georgia, Nick, where no, are no, you? I can't let that go. I know it's Come past on, Georgia. the pantomime season. You need season, to cut in on Nigel. But, oh, no, you don't. Nick. You talked about doing a trade Such deal a with China. Iceland has a population of a third of a million. They've got a trade ready. deal with China, a and the European one. Union hasn't managed to do it. If right. Iceland's big enough, we're big Thank enough. You. Norway, often held up as the great paragon of greater independence and taking control of their own affairs, have catastrophically lost control and real sovereignty over their own affairs okay. because they're not at the table where those rules are being drafted. Okay. Once again, uh, Nick is telling you a complete pack of lies about Norway and their deal, but he's good at that. He's done it for a living for years. The, what I would say, I mean, we're being told, wouldn't it be dreadful to be like Norway? How ghastly. Can you imagine being rich and independent and happy? Why is it the Norwegian government have okay. said, Britain, you shouldn't follow our example? Why do you think Don't that is? Can I tell you why that is, Nick? Why is that? Can I tell you why that is? Because just like you, and just like oh, they're lying as well, they? in this country, so the Norwegians, the Norwegians lied, who voted no to the European All Union right. were betrayed easy, by their own political class and signed and up to the single it's market. All a betrayal, and Nick. it shows the danger okay. of trusting people right. like you. There are almost as many Brits living, studying, working in Europe as there are Europeans okay. coming here. No, All right. right. Okay. Why, on that why point, would we, Nick, why would you deprive them of that freedom? Nigel, Nigel, what happens to Brits lying, abroad? Nick. Can we please stop lying? Why do you do this? Why do you do this? What happens I mean, to the Brits in Spain, Nigel? You know, there are four million. There are four million EU citizens living in this, including my wife, living in this country <laughs> and living full time in the rest of Europe, excluding Ireland, fewer than three quarters of a million. Can we please at least argue on the basis of okay. the fact? I think that NATO and okay. our relationship with America is threatened by EU All right. The bigger danger is in. Putin. The bigger danger is Putin. The big, okay. much bigger Juncker, danger Juncker. of this fantasy fear Mr. of the Juncker army says it every is Vladimir week, Putin. Okay. What Stop does Vladimir lying. Putin want? Stop, Stop can... lying to people about this. You lied in 14 and you're lying again. They want a European army and that's a fact. It says here that 29 million Romanians and Bulgarians may come to this country. There aren't even 29 million Romanians and Bulgaria, Bulgarians living in Romania and Bulgaria. You try to do trickery with 29 million, saying there aren't 29. You know why? Because 2 million have left already. And they've gone, and they've gone to Italy and to Spain. I'm not claiming 29 million people have the right to come to Britain. Yes, I'm claiming 485 million people have the total unconditional right to come to this country if they want to. The House of Commons has shown that roughly 7%, 7% of all new laws are related to the European Union. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> You've used some seconds up, I'd hurry 7%. up if I were you. What are you on about? 7% of our primary law is it derives right. from the European Union. Oh the reality yeah. is the bureaucracy oh, is no, no, no bigger than the people employed Nick, by Derbyshire is, County Council. I'm sorry. I said yes to these debates. I thought you would honestly make the pro-EU case. By saying 7% of our laws are made in Brussels, you are willfully lying to the British people about the extent to which we have given away control of our country and our democracy. And I'm really shocked and surprised that you would try and do that. I don't think in a debate like this, Nigel Farage, you should start making things up to make a point. Well, you've done rather well at no, it so no, far, no, Nick, no. haven't you? Well, you I wouldn't do? be surprised if Nigel Farage soon tells us that the moon landing was a do? fake, that Barack Obama isn't American, that Elvis isn't dead. <laughs> You know, Why it is not going to happen. Stop. Why do you Stop. deny he your claimed union? Last week, he claimed Why last week, he claimed union, last week that 485 million people were going to vacate the whole of the rest of the European continent and turn up in Britain. You're saying that I said 485 million people would come to Britain. I didn't. I said they were able to. You came up with the most twisted trade figure so I've ever heard. And last week you even said you try to tell the British people that only 7% of our national laws emanate in the European Union. That is true. It's a guarantee now in law 
when the rules change, when new powers are given up to the European Union, there will, there must, and there will be a referendum. But the trouble is, Nick, the trouble is, Nick, nobody believes you. Make sure that people who do come here, for instance, speak the language. I agree, we must make sure. How are you going to do that? That would be against European Union rules. You can't do that. You haven't got this power. Yes, you haven't do. got this control. Yes, I would be all for, Nick, yes, an do. immigration policy based on people speaking English, having skills, and being law-abiding citizens. We do not have that yes, power as members of the European Union. Yes. And that's the truth of it. Nigel Farage says he admires, he admires the way that Vladimir Putin has played as if it's a game. I don't admire Putin. What I said was... He'd outwitted and outclassed you all over Syria. Joan's well, question is, how do you control immigration as an EU member? Be honest with people. Well, what we, we can't. And what you say, tell well, them I, the truth. Well, I will tell exactly the tell truth, which the is truth. that the freedom to move around the European Union should not be the same as the freedom to claim. That's irrelevant. Yes, we, it is not That's irrelevant. irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. This is not about benefits. It's, it's about, about movement of people. But your problem is you seem to imply anyone who's foreign who comes to this country is a menace. We I simply not, can't have country. Of the we, can't, we must we've remain generous spirited and open minded to the rest of the world. You won't admit the truth. Will you? The truth is, there's nothing we can do. You can come into Britain from anywhere in the world and get diagnosed with HIV and get the retroviral drugs that cost up to £25,000 per year per patient. I know there are some horrible things happening in many parts of the world, but what we need to do is to put the National Health Service there for British people and families who in many cases have paid into this system for decades. Thank you. Leanne Wood. This kind of scam under in no, it's scam a fact. rhetoric it's a fact. is dangerous. It's, a fact. it's dangerous, it divides well, it's communities true. and it creates <laughs> stigma to people who are ill. And I think you no, would be ashamed of yourself. Well I'm sorry, we've got to put our own people first. I've sat around that table in Europe and negotiated for Britain. You can get things done and I've set out what I want to get done so that we can sort out this immigration issue once and for all. But Mrs Merkel who is the real boss in Europe, as we all know, has made it perfectly clear we can, you can negotiate lots of things over the next couple of years, but you cannot renegotiate the free movement of peoples within the European Union, and that is backed up by the Commission President and the President of the European Council and the overwhelming majority of the European Parliament. Do you accept or not that in your renegotiation, free movement is not up for discussion. I don't accept that. Nigel is basically really? saying, give up before you've begun. No, In no, fact, if you look at my track record on Europe, <laughs> I said... I have. There just seems to be a total lack of comprehension on this panel, um, and indeed amongst this audience, which is a remarkable audience, even, even, by, even by the left-wing standards of the BBC. I mean, this lot's pretty left-wing. Oh, uh, hang, on, hang on a second. Um, but it's very hang, interesting. On, hang on a second. But, but when you talk Nigel, about housing, let me just say one thing. Yeah. This is an audience that yeah. has been carefully chosen, not very by the BBC. His sums don't add up. Well, our sums do add up. And it, it, very interesting. Ed, we're the first political party in the history of this country to have had our manifesto promises independently verified by an economic think tank. You obviously haven't read the manifesto, you should. You don't want the National Health Service, you want a private insurance system of healthcare. Stop lying. UKIP believes right. in the National Health Service, free at the point okay. of delivery. Could I get any recognition from any of you that the demand side of this equation is that a rapidly rising population due to open-door immigration, started by Ed Miliband's Labour Party in the late 1990s, has directly contributed towards the housing crisis. Is there any flicker of recognition from any of you? Please, we have, one of you, have a go, have, please. We have a housing shortage across this country. But you know what, Nigel Farage, it's not caused by immigrants. In your world, every problem is caused by immigrants. We need to... We need to... It's just astonishing. I mean, if, if you cannot you accept, are, yes. if you cannot accept, if you if you are not worldly enough to accept there is a demand supply to, side to this equation, then I'm. I, I do. Uh, I'm very that. sorry. No, I want to come I'm back. Very, very sorry. I accept the demand I think, and supply. I simply don't accept that all of the demand bit of it is down to immigrants. Well, when, the po I, I, all right, I, when the population goes up, Nick, on, you two. when the population it's, goes up, there is more demand for houses. Right. It's not difficult, really. So well, Nigel, just a your, your whole life and career has been about banking. Has about being cutting working class He's rights and living standards He's never and you been put, a banker. And you no, put yourself up, up as some I'm kind sorry. of uh, populist. No. Come on, Nigel. No, you know. No, I'm sorry, Jeremy. I've never worked in a bank. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you've got your little image. And remind me how many elected representatives you have in Scotland? Absolutely none. But rather more than the BBC do. Um, and, you know, we could have had this interview in England a couple of years. Although I wouldn't have met with such hatred as I'm getting from your questions. And frankly, I've had enough of this interview. Goodbye.